All right. And good, uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Judge Melissa Madrigal. And first, I want to take the opportunity to thank the League of Women Voters, the Hispanic Women's Network, and also the Leadership Corpus Christi Class 38 uh, for the opportunity to present uh, my, uh, my platform. I uh, graduated from Texas A&M in 1998, and I um, went to law school. I'm sorry, I graduated from law school in 1998. And I came, my first job was as a third year uh, bar st law school student with uh, the Harris County District Attorney's Office. And that's where I started my career in the, the criminal justice system. I was the um, intern for the Family Criminal Law Division. Uh, and I, uh, what I did is I represented victims that needed protective orders in the Harris County Courts. When I worked there, there was 224 DAs. Uh, subsequently, after graduating, I moved back to Corpus Christi, and my first job was actually in County Court of Law Number 5. I was the assistant district attorney there until 2005. Uh, during that time, I handled every kind of case that ever appeared in that court. I handled murders, sexual assaults. I certified juveniles to stand trials on adults for very serious offenses. I um, prepared cases and presented them to the grand jury. I handled uh, over 1,000 detention hearings, more than 200 adjudications and dispositions. Uh, and then I left in 2005 to become a judge for the city of Corpus Christi. As a judge for the city of Corpus Christi, ultimately went to the judge of the juvenile court for municipal court, and now I'm a judge for Nueces County Magistrate Court. I am seeking this position for County Court 5, not because it's a job to me, it's because it's a responsibility that I am undertaking uh, for this community. I, uh, it's a job that I take very seriously and I prepared my entire legal career for. So I am asking for your vote for County Court 5. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. There we go. How about now? <laughs> Start my time over. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to also thank everybody for being here, especially the league for having us. Um, I, I'd like to first talk about the court that, uh, that I'm running for. Um, county Court 5, and I don't think anybody will argue with me, is the most important court in this county. And it's that way because it deals with the lives of, of the children and the families um, here. If a child gets in trouble, whether it's from neglect, legal trouble, gets arrested, they're going to end up in County Court 5. And nobody's going to make any money in Court 5. Uh, there's no big time civil litigation. It's truly a public service court. And that's why I'm running for it. I'm Timothy McCoy. Uh, I grew up in this county in Corpus Christi. I graduated King High School. I went to uh, uh, college at the University of Texas at Austin, graduated South Texas College of Law. And I returned to our county and began my legal career in County Court 5. Um, I've had a broad range of legal experience. Uh, I've represented your largest corporations uh, to individuals in Justice of the Peace Court. But most importantly, uh, my entire career has been practicing in County Court Law Number 5. I've handled every type of case in that court, from your juvenile adjudications to CPS cases um, to JP appeals, guardianships. I've done them all. Uh, what it comes down to to me is the County Court of Law Number 5 is my passion. Serving the children and families of this community is my passion. That's why it's the bulk of my practice. And as an attorney with my experience and skill set, I believe uh, I can make a difference. And that's why I like this court. Uh, I have two lovely children, uh, a five-year-old and a nine-year-old. And I think when you deal with children on a daily basis, it's important that you know where children are coming from. Uh, I've also worked with and mentored children my entire life. Um, I'm before you today um, as a candidate, uh, I believe, with the broadest range of legal and life experience, you, and I ask for your support. Thank you. <clears throat> this question will be for both of you. Your court deals with a substantial volume of teenager, teenage cases. Should teens be charged more leniently? Mr. McCoy, if you want to start first. Uh, I can't, I don't think you can make a broad <coughs> Uh, I mean, it's a pretty broad question. I think you have to take every case um, on an individual basis. You know, the the goal in juvenile adjudications, it's not kind of, it's not, it's a little bit different than your adult system. In your adult system, your first goal is to punish a, an individual, whereas your first goal in a juvenile adjudication is rehabilitation. And I believe that's what you have to, you have to look at that in every single case, um, whether teenager or, or whatever the age is, because that's the law. 
Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Ms. Madrigal. The, uh, well, I, I think it's important to note that the charging is actually done by the district attorney's office, not the judges. And I think we have to uphold the law as it's written. If a crime, if, if a juvenile is committing a crime that is part of, of growing up, they're missing school, you know, you can, you can use the rehabilitative process. If a child is in our community and they're committing murders, they're committing rapes, they're committing offenses that pose a danger to our community, then we need to seek other avenues, such as certification, determinant sentencing. And uh, as a previous prosecutor, I, you know, I presented uh, cases to the grand jury uh, for determinant sentencing. I certified juveniles, so that would not be a problem in making a decision of that, of that magnitude. As a judge right now, I, I, you know, I've had to send people to prison. You have to have somebody on that bench that is willing to make hard decisions uh, and, and uphold the laws of, of this community, keep the community safe, and as well as raise the bar of expectation for our juveniles. Thank you. <laughs> this next question is for both of you. Um, we'll start with you, Ms. Madrigal. How many murder cases have you represented uh, the state or juveniles in court number five? In County Court 5, I represented the state <coughs> in a, the first South Texas juvenile serial murder, which is Mitchell Mavoides, that was certified to stand trial as an adult, and he was later sentenced to life, and he committed three murders. Uh, there was a criminal negligent homicide. Um, I'd say about eight cases uh, involving murder that were directly sent, and they're juveniles between the ages of 10 to 17 that I'd handled as a prosecutor. As a defense attorney, there was uh, one murder that I represented a juvenile on. That was, uh, the, le the, the charges were later dismissed because he was innocent. Thank you. Mr. McCoy? Uh, and I, as everybody, I haven't been a prosecutor in that court, so I've never represented the state. I've, uh, I've defended a number of murder cases in the adult system, and I have represented one individual on a murder case in um, County Court 5. Thank you. Next question again for both of you. Should one court handle all of these sorts of cases? Mr. McCoy, would you like to start? I like it that way for a number of reasons. In, in most counties, and uh, in, in I've practiced in, in most of your counties surrounding this area, your juvenile and CPS cases uh, tend to be divided up among numerous district and county, county courts. And <coughs> what that leads to is uh, a lack of continuity in the outcome of the cases so you know you may have one or a, a different judge each time you go uh, before the court I like the way this county does it because you know you have the opportunity as a judge to see a case from the beginning to the end I think that's ve that that's very important especially when you're dealing with um, CPS cases where you know every little detail matters you don't want to be 